Hello everybody, I'm here with Simon Bates. Hello. And we are going to look at two uh, of the very popular Yanaga Sours. And although we've got the Altos, what we're going to talk about is true across the range of Yanaga Sours. So you can apply what we're going to mention to soprano, tenor, baritone as well. So one of the most common questions we get asked with Yanaga Sour is the difference between the brass models and the bronze models. And so just for a quick thing on numbering, the brass models always have a one in. So for example, AW01 or AW010, and the bronze models always have a 2, so AW02, and there's an AW020 as well. Now, I don't want to crazy you even more with numbers, but they <laughs> used to be 991, 901, brass, 902, 992, bronze. So basically, ah. if there's a 2, there's a bronze. Very clever. Okay, there's a method yeah, with my methods. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so we do get asked, well, why are they different? Because there is a little difference in the price. First thing I would say is the bronze, which is this one here, you can see it's a little bit darker. Mm -hmm. it's, it's not a finish, so you have to think it's not a finish. It's not like a black lacquer or anything else. It's that the pure constituents of the brass are different. They have a different makeup of the copper and the zinc in, into the raw brass. So when you, have copper, uh, when you have bronze, sorry, it means there's more copper and less zinc in the actual components of the brass. Whereas when you have the brass body one like uh, Simon has here, that means there's more zinc and less copper. There is still a bit of copper, but there's a lot less than there is in this. So what does that mean in reality is hopefully what we're going to try and talk to you about in this video. Um, there is no other difference in the saxophones, though. The keywork, the design, everything else is exactly the same. Yeah, identical. It's just the mm -hmm. tubes and the bell and the crook, and I just mean the raw brass that's different. Mm -hmm. So. Let's have a little bit of a blow on this is the brass AW01 and then we'll do a quick swap to this and then we'll talk about maybe your feelings, Simon, as well. Okay, mm. so very nice. Let's have a quick change to the O2. We'll maybe do something similar just so you can see if you can spot any differences. It's always slightly <laughs> difficult when you're listening through a laptop or phone or whatever it is you might be listening to these on, but that's why it's important we get the impressions of the player as well. And just while Simon's getting ready on that, um, they do the O10 and the O2O versions with the underslung neck, and we've done a different video about those variances. So this is really just the brass and the bronze we're, we're worried about when you're ready. So Simon, and we've done a bit of blowing before the video as well, and Simon's mm -hmm. used to these models anyway, but what do you think between the bronze and the brass versions? Um, this has definitely got more uh, a more mellow uh, yet powerful vibe to it. The, 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 uh, the, the brass one is, is bright um, and centred, um, whereas this is it's also centred, but it's, 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 it's kind of got a weight that that, that hasn't got. Yeah. Um, there's a sort of resonance to the bronze, which is makes it feel quite alive, is my opinion, when, mm -hmm. when you play them. I actually had a bronze tenor for years, and um, it's very enjoyable to play, very reliable. The only catch I would say sometimes with the bronze is when you're in quite a loud section, if you're playing in a, you know, a, 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 how would we say, an experienced big band, for example, where there's lots of guys really, and girls throwing lots of air into things, mm -hmm. the bronze can feel a little bit broad and sometimes you lose a little bit of the centre of the sound, oh, okay. um, in my opinion. But it does depend and it's got such a beautiful sound because of that extra copper in it. I think sometimes it's a bit of a payoff and you can combat that with mouthpieces. Yeah. Um, but Yannicka sounds generally kind of do everything, don't they? That's one of they the do, yeah. I mean, this, this particular one, it sounds sweet, it sounds lovely, sounds mellifluous. I think that's, uh, that's a good word for it. Fantastic. Um, yeah, it's a, it, it, it's a really nice, really nice tone. Yeah. Um, whereas obviously with the brass, you get the, the, the brightness, you get a, it's a bit more brash, but you know, perhaps I, I would play, uh, you know, use this to, to play like Paul Desmond and that to play like David Sanborn. 
Do you see what I mean? That's you see? If, I mean, if you could buy either of all, you're, <laughs> yes. you're sorted either way. The gigs are plenty. Yeah. But no, I know what you mean. And, and it may depend on your map, etc. And what we all like, you know, we like different sounds on a saxophone, don't we? Mm. Some people like that resonance, some people like the depth. Indeed, yeah. You know, so think about that. That would be what we'd encourage you to do. Think about what you want your saxophone sound to be like, because some of the equipment will never just give it to you, but it might help you in that direction. And that's the thing. So, cool. Well, hopefully that's helped. Um, they're both very popular. We sell them in equal amounts. And classical jazz, you can kind of do anything on each. But maybe, Simon, if you just give us a little bit more, maybe something a little uh, livelier, a little dirtier, perhaps. <laughs> Thank you. 